Hello, everyone, and welcome to another interview of uh, our Aviation Week Network ATW Leadership Forum. My name is Kurt Hoffmann. I'm a correspondent for ATW. And today I have really the great pleasure to talk to Jens Bischoff, the CEO of the German Lufthansa subsid subsidiary Eurowings. Jens, nice talking to you and welcome. Thank you very much for the invite, Kurt. It's a pleasure to be here. A pleasure for us also because we know all you guys are very busy during these times. Uh, Jens, I'd like to start. Uh, Eurowings is uh, part of the Lufthansa group and Lufthansa announced quite a, also a reduction for the winter schedule. Uh, Eurowings, I think, uh, will just operate around 30 aircraft during the winter. So how you are prepared your company for the winter season? Is there a kind of estimation what you can expect in terms of passengers or traffic in these uncertain times? Yeah, well, let me start by saying, Kurt, and once again, thanks for being with you and uh, uh, participate in your format. I think that's very good. And it's actually, you know, uh, part of these times that we quickly adapt and uh, change to new possibilities. And therefore, I really appreciate being with you today. Uh, back to your question, I think uh, without decreasing numbers of infections, without a reliable test strategy and or vaccines or medication, the recovery for air traffic and tourism is almost not possible. Hmm. And therefore, people, you observe this every day once, you know, you see that a risk area is declared to be, you know, open again, you see that people have worldwide a great desire to travel. Yeah. But of course, all the rules around quarantines and combinations with very different and unpredictable travel restrictions do have a severe effect on bookings and travel decisions. And accordingly, we need to adjust our capacities in the Lufthansa Group in order to burn as little cash mm -hmm. as possible over the coming winter. This means for Eurowings that during the winter, we believe that only about 30% of our capacity will be flying in order to operate at least cover the cost or covering the cost and some of the routes, hopefully profitably. And you see that of course, with the recent developments around the Canary Islands, this is a very important part in the, at the moment as Germany's largest uh, leisure airline, we're expanding our footprint at least in this area. And of course, also in other areas. So bottom line, uh, it's a positive signal for us and it's a positive signal for the entire industry. And whenever people are allowed to travel, they will travel and they will fly. And we saw this again at the end of October when Canary Island opened. We sold actually our inauguration flight to Canary Islands. We sold them within days. And that is a good signal that the travel desire is very strong, yet we have to adapt our capacities. Yes, but difficult, difficult time ahead as we see the next few months uh, in Europe, anywhere. And, but yes, beside the financial disaster for all the airlines, actually, so everyone have to will lose money. What what we can learn, or as, as an airline like Eurowings, what you can learn from this crisis? Which which kind of uh, ideas maybe you create and maybe can take with you when times are coming better? Well, I would say first and foremost, it's about dynamic change. And uh, when I talk about dynamic change, I mean high speed dynamic change. <laughs> Our environment, as you know, is uh, quite complex. And we've built that environment over many, many years, especially in legacy terms. And uh, I believe with, you know, the introduction of uh, AI, of predictive analytics, uh, new uh, internet based tools, we see that airlines tend to struggle here and there with smaller changes. And now we're working in an environment with huge changes, basically on a daily basis. And that of course uh, characterizes COVID because it's a real game changer. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we end in a new area where we have to adapt super quickly. Yeah. Uh, we're basically not putting out flight plans twice a year. Basically we do that on an almost everyday basis in order to adapt. And of course, we do see that a lot of things are happening, especially around the customer. The requirements have changed rapidly. Products and services must adapt to this new area. And I'm quite proud that we at Eurowings were able to adapt quicker than almost any other airline in Europe 
especially when you think about, you know, the question what customers need at the moment. Mm -hmm. There is no need for a five euro or 10 euro ticket at the moment. That's not the point. Yeah. People are searching for reliable hygiene concept. They want to maintain and look after their health. They want to choose an airline which they can trust and which does not jeopardize not only the experience, but also the health condition. And I believe this with the Lufthansa DNA, we can represent and really bring across very, very, um, uh, um, very, very clear and very explicitly. And so we are changing our products and services uh, quite, quite, uh, quite rapidly. You know, we've been one of the first airlines offering a free middle seat for purchase, yeah. which in the meantime is a real, um, is a real good sell uh, in terms of that we've sold and um, uh, almost about or uh, well above 10,000 middle seats in the meantime. So that is something which I believe from flight guidance, from a Corona insur insurance, hygiene concepts, even free middle seats and other, this is something where you see that a value concept for an airline works particularly well in our space. And that is why we're doing much better than most of our low cost competitors. So that means your passengers appreciate these ideas and measures you offer? Oh, absolutely. If you look um, at uh, your colleagues' uh, ranking of uh, Aerotelegraph as an example, Eurowings in the meantime is in the top three ranks of uh, the most popular airlines. If we look at the Horizon Brent uh, ticker, we see that especially in times of crisis, we gained about 25% in Brent recognition from our customers. So there's clear evidence, not only by booking numbers in these uncertain times, but also if we look how the brand comes across, how trustworthy Eurowings is in perceived in the public, you see clear improvements. And that for me is a clear sign that customers are clearly recognizing what we're doing here at Eurowings. Uh, Eurowings also reacted quite quickly. Uh, I think it was in Düsseldorf where Ryan has, uh, let's say it's louder motion or louder Europe now in these days, announced it will close his base and you reacted there with uh, capacity. I think your base aircrafts there. Are you also plan if some somewhere else maybe another of your competitors will go away like in Stuttgart or something are you planning to also add capacity there quickly if someone of the low-cost carriers competitors disappear yeah well you're absolutely right Cord. I mean first and foremost um, I think if you look at Ryanair we see that they have already left now Düsseldorf they've left Stuttgart they have left Bremen and Nürnberg and also EasyJet has given up a significant number of domestic flights and uh, cut its Berlin presence almost by half. And that is something where we see, of course, opportunities. We have 40 aircraft based in Dusseldorf mm -hmm. and they're really based there. And um, there was no question that we're gonna take over uh, approximately 90% of Ryanair's destinations and routes, mm -hmm. uh, which they left behind. And uh, you see, and apparently Ryanair and EasyJet have uh, fun almost everywhere across Europe, except Germany. And this is not only COVID driven. It could also be due that um, we know better the customers in Germany, that our mm -hmm. value concept is better perceived by the customers as we spoke before. And that not only just cheap prices are a decision item in customers' mind in these days. And this is even more true in times of crisis, in times of uncertainty. And yes, you can expect that we will also react in other geographies as we did in Dusseldorf, that we're picking up opportunities and that Eurowings is clearly expanding its leading footprint as a leisure airline here in Germany. I'd like to talk uh, another question about your competitors. I just had a chat with uh, Michael O'Leary from Ryanair a few weeks ago. And uh, he told me that uh, Eurowings is too expensive in terms of cost. They will never make it to become profitable. So we all know Michael O'Leary for his uh, statements. How is your cost base? Can we compare it to a kind of EasyJet or Ryanair? Or Wizzia probably is much lower. Where is uh, Eurowings at the moment located? And you have to maybe go down more with the cost? 
Well, let me let me try to answer this in a broader context because we all know that due to its extremely low price policy, which has only limited success in these days at Ryanair, mm -hmm. you see that they need, they urgently need a low cost structure, which we all know they facilitate through several things. And we saw the layoffs here in Germany. We saw that they laid off people immediately in Dusseldorf as they are moving on. And that is something which we're not doing. We are reliable and we customers can trust on our presence and they can trust on our continued services, air services. On the other side is, you know, the profitability of an airline is not just about cost positioning. It's yeah. also about the revenue quality you're acquiring from your customers. And that is something where Ryanair dreams about the possibility what we achieve uh, with our value concept. And of course, we're looking at cost very seriously, mm -hmm. but we're not cutting cost on customer's expense. I do believe that if you look what we've done in the meantime, since I arrived, I really try to create that value, create value for the customer, which is, uh, you know, price worthy, number one. And secondly, which is affordable. And that is something which also from my times at the JetBlue board in, in New York, uh, when I was on the board of directors, we created that, you know, special space where we said, you know, there some routes are overpriced, some are underserved, or some are just, you know, not rightly served because the value proposition is not correct. And this is exactly what we're doing here. So we compare ourselves, of course, going in the direction into EasyJet in terms of cost. And even if we are a little bit above right now, we have no problem with this because we have a revenue, prop a revenue proposition from our customer, which is way better than Ryanair and still a lot better than EasyJet. Uh, Jens, is it possible to think of an estimation about the summer 2021 or is it too difficult to, to, to talk about as we don't know what happens all over the winter and hopefully then we find a bit more solutions for to cover the, the corona crisis. Can you give us an, an outlook if possible? Of course, of course. And, and, and as you know, Kurt, there's only limited space for optimists in these days. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but, but I count myself as one of that species. And in other words, I, I do believe if you look at the industry, the entire industry expects a very weak first quarter 2021 mm -hmm. and probably a difficult first half of the coming year. But even in this difficult fall and winter, there are signs that there is, which are encouraging. As I said, the desire for travel is there. People, they want to travel. And there is a, I expect that there is a major catch up effect once we get the pandemic under control, where testing strategies are in place, vaccine, medication, whatever have you. So for early summer, we're seeing almost, I would say, normal booking intakes in these days, mm -hmm. which reflects the fact that people do believe that, you know, solutions will be found. They assume that travel restrictions will be lifted and they want to fly. And of course, leisure travel will recover faster than other segments. And that brings me a little bit to the positive or optimistic scenario that of course, um, the peak of the summer 21 might show a quick rebound, especially in the leisure space, especially in the space of the visit family and friends segment. Yeah. And we will see that there will be you know, significant movement. However, this is under the precondition that we're successful in dialogue with politicians to find sustainable and reliable testing strategies, medications, vaccines are found, and that we are able to deliver this in a reliable and clean and, and, and good way to our customers that they trust us and that we reduce that uncertainty. And then of course, you will see that even Eurowings will be further able to expand its footprint as the leading leisure airline in Germany. Can we say that also, let's say the airlines who survived this crisis, let's say the coming winter, all the airlines which survived this will be then much leaner and much uh, more quicker in when something has to change. Do you believe so as well that airlines getting learning a lot from this? 
Well, I would say, and, and put it even more drastically, airlines that are not efficient will no longer exist after the crisis, to be very honest, Kurt. Um, the crisis is too sharp. Uh, the slump is too rapid. And I think a competitive cost position is even more important as a lifeline in these days for each and every airline. So just to stay in the game, if you will. Yeah. So for for you know prices alone are you know a decision point in these days, but they're no longer enough as a decision point. Mm. Um, and since COVID, as I said, se uh, safety, health, trust, these are the topics which we need to address first and foremost. And whoever puts together the best care and value package is going to convince the customers and will win the race in the future. And I believe, again, with our Lufthansa DNA, we can represent this in a very good and trustworthy fashion. And I think we're very well positioned to succeed because we're changing and adapting so fast. Final questions also regarding, regarding Lufthansa. What can Lufthansa learn from Eurowings? <laughs> well, Lufthansa number one is a powerhouse and um, it's an industry leader in many areas and um, has always done its pioneering work, uh, setting standards. But Lufthansa is also smart enough to look twice when, you know, subsidiaries, adjacent companies come up with new developments and things in the market. And of course, we exchange our data, we exchange our knowledge and experiences. And especially if you take the free middle seat, which your wings launch as one of the first airlines this summer is a very good example. Now you have it available even on Lufthansa economy class. And whether you look for more comfort or you believe that more distance is according to your needs, you have the choice, not only at your wings, but also at Lufthansa. And of course we have, you know, the advantage of being a, a little smaller, a little bit more agile and uh, speed and agility are important, especially in times of rapid change, as we said. And I believe if you look at the current change uh, of dynamics at Eurowings, uh, this is quite impressive and the customers, they like it. And Lufthansa will also change accordingly. And that is a good symbiosis, if you will, here, especially in the Lufthansa group where we exchange knowledge, data, experiences with Lufthansa, with Swiss, with Austrian, Brussels Airlines, Air Dolomiti and others. Jens Bischof, CEO of Eurowings. Jens, thank you very much for your time talking to us. All the best for your airline and uh, hopefully you can have a good winter and start powerful into the summer 2021. Thank you very much, Gurt. That's very kind of you. It was a true pleasure being with you and uh, wishing you all the best. Stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Jens. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. And until the next interview, Thank you and bye-bye.